Hi, this is Rita with Lakeside Recipes, and today we're going to be making a key lime cheesecake, which is one of my family's very favorite, my husband's special favorite. Uh, and the ingredients and the recipe will be listed below. Uh, today, I like to start with uh, parchment on the bottom of the pan. We have a standard springform pan. I use a nine inch. You can use whichever size you want. Remember, as if you use a different size, you're going to have to compensate on the depth of your cheesecake. I like to make a, a parchment circle. I use the whole pan and I use a trace on the outside. And in just a moment, you'll see the method behind my madness here. Okay, and we're going to cut this out. Regular parchment I find works best in the kitchen for almost everything. I used to be an aluminum foil person, but switched to parchment and I've never looked back. Now what we're going to do is cut about every two inches all the way around, just little snips all the way around the parchment. Now what this does, it makes your parchment actually fit better. It makes it more snug up the sides and it doesn't wrinkle so you don't get that wrinkle in your crust. And you push it down in there and if you'll see, it, it fits really nicely. There's no wrinkles, it goes right up the sides. And then after that, I like to do a little spray of, of non-cooked cooking, uh, cooking spray all the way around the edge. That's just so you get a good release on your cake. Okay, now that's set. Now on to the crust. For the crust, I like to use plain graham crackers. You can use Oreo cookie crumbs on any other kind of cake, but not on, tea, on a key lime. Some people like to use pretzels, like ground up pretzels of the crumbs. We're going to use six tablespoons of melted butter. It takes about 30 seconds in a microwave. And here's our melted butter. Pour it all in there. And just about a quarter cup of plain granulated white sugar. I, use, I like to use fork. You just stir it around. Make sure you get the sugar dissolved in with the graham cracker crumbs and the butter mixed in good. It goes very quickly. Okay, now depending on how thick you like your crust, you start to dump, dump it in. Start with a, about that much, I like to leave a little bit. Now before I start it, I want to make sure my work surface is clean and my hands have been washed. So Now on this part, I use the back of my fingers to push the cake, the crumbs up against the side of the pan. You want to go up about maybe an inch. Some people like it higher, some people like to go way up high. But just keep pressing it in as you go and then patting it down. You want a nice firm base for your cake, so 
You don't want to skimp on the bottom. Now we've got our crust all ready and made. We can set that aside while we work on the batter. Okay, now onto the batter. What we're going to do first is put eight, um, eight ounce packages of cream cheese. I use five for this recipe. Usually your ratio on, cream, on cheesecakes is one package of cream cheese to one egg. But with a key lime, since we use juice, we're gonna compensate by using six eggs and a little bit of flour. Okay, we're gonna cream the cream cheese and sugar together first. Now, it, it helps to soften your cream cheese. Uh, lay it out on the counter a few hours before. Get it nice and uh, creamy instead of that hard solid because it, it creams in with the sugar much better. Okay, now we're going to take about one and three quarters, somewhere in there. You can, comment, you can go a little up, a little down, depending on your personal taste. General rule of thumb is about one and three quarters. As I said, you can compensate for your family's taste and key lime juice. <laughs> okay, now we're going to mix this until it's well blended. Now remember to have a firm spatula ready because you are going to have to scrape the sides of the pan down and the bottom to get it to mix nice and smoothly and get it off the beaters. Okay, we had a, small, uh, a very minor um, mechanical malfunction. I think it was user operator since I didn't have it cranked up. Now we start. You start on a low speed because you want your cream cheese blended into the into the sugar really well. And then, uh, let me turn this around a little bit so you can see. You can increase the speed as it, as it incorporates in. Spatula, you're gonna scrape down the sides. Go on one side, you just scrape your spatula off on the beater, let it go down like a half a turn and then get the other side. Go underneath, because that's where it hides. Okay. We're gonna add our key lime juice and a little bit of flour. The eggs, I always incorporate last. I, it's a good idea not to overbeat the eggs, so make that your last ingredient to add. Just rest that spatula on one of those cups. Now, my family likes a very tart key lime cheesecake. So I use a full cup. You can use like a half a cup if your family likes something less. Or you can adjust it. It's Recipes are always made to have variations, and they should be your variations. Okay, that gets mixed in. They said I like to add, just because I'm adding so much juice, I add one extra egg and like a tablespoon of flour. Get rid of some of these so I can have a better space to work in. That top of the egg there. Okay, now we're gonna whip this really good. Make sure that flour gets incorporated in all of your cream cheese. Okay, we're gonna wipe it down one more time. 
Just run your spatula along the outside edges. Just play with the uh, control on the mixer just so you get all the way around. And this is the point where we're, we're going to incorporate the eggs. Okay, now to crack the eggs, I just like to crack them on the surface, but I do like to crack them into a, a dish first and get make sure that the eggs are fine. Something my mother used to do, had a good, but of course then she had farm eggs that came right from the farm, so it was a different time. But it does help with incorporating them because you can just add them slowly and you can just control the, the release so you're not adding one and then stop and then add another one. Okay, there we have six eggs. All right, now this is the part, as I said, that you don't want to over whip your eggs. So they are always added at the end. And here we go. Nice and easy. I'm going to release this down and then run the spatula around one more time. You don't want any clumps that are hiding down the bottom of your pan or of your bowl or your beaters or anything. Okay. Scrape the spatula off a little bit all the way under the bottom. All right, one more quick one, and we're ready to put it in the pan. Move the thing up again. <laughs> okay. Just quickly to incorporate any of the cheese, cream cheese or anything that got left behind. Okay, now we're ready. This is the messy part, releasing the paddle. And I did want to mention that I use a paddle for a reason. The paddle, if you use the wire, I tore up so many of the wire whisks that go with the attachment because cream cheese is just too firm for the, for the wire. A paddle works great and you don't have to worry about it tearing tear it up and replace, having to replace it. Okay. Now, if you can see, we got a nice creamy batter. Okay, let me get this mixture out of our area here. Now, we have this is a prepared pan and we're all set. We're just gonna pour it directly into the pan slowly now because we had a, a full cup of key lime juice and six eggs sometimes you'll have batter left over you know those leftover graham cracker crumbs put them in a little ramekin pour a little extra batter in you have individual little cheesecakes that you can use later okay All right, now you can see I have a little bit left and that's what I'm gonna make. I'm gonna pour into some ramekins with the leftover, remember the extra graham cracker crumbs I said? Put those in the bottom, 
We put a little, uh, spray a little Pam on them, put the batter in there, watch them though, they only take, they take uh, maybe a quarter of the time of a regular cheesecake. Now you want to shift it around just a little, just to make sure you have no air bubbles, not much so. And I also put in the bottom of the pan of oven, I put a wet tea towel, very, very wet tea towel in like a jelly roll pan or something, put it under the shelf under the cheesecake. I used to have them and I would put uh, aluminum foil on the bottom of the cheesecake and then I would set it into a, a pan like that. It does not work. Either your crust is gonna get wet, it doesn't dry out, it's a mess, don't do it. Okay, we're going to, uh, we've got a preheated oven at 400 degrees and we're gonna do that for only 15 minutes and then you're immediately going to turn down after 15 minutes, set a timer. You don't wanna mess this up. 15 minutes, it causes the whole shell on the outside to set so your cake does not depress in the middle, which is a common happening with cheesecakes. Okay, here we go. Here. And they mentioned 400 degrees for 15 minutes. And now I do have the other ramekin. Remember I told you that you use the leftover batter and the leftover crumbs? This does not go in the same time. So we're gonna set a timer for about 15 minutes. Alexa, set a timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, starting now. And the other ramekin will go in for about five minutes. So in about 10 minutes, we'll put the ramekin in and it'll get set up in about five minutes instead. And then okay, our cheesecake done now. It's been in the oven about 90 minutes. Now this time is going to vary a little bit depending on the cake and your oven and the temperature. So kind of test it first and I'll show you how to do that now. You pull this out of the oven. Now you see the edges are starting to dry a little bit. Now the center is gonna look like it's not quite done. That's fine, it's gonna set up later. But see, you can touch, you get a little springy. That's perfect. Now we're gonna take this out of the oven and put it on a cooling rack. Now here, if a little close up, you get a little more, you can see where it starts to dry around the edges a little bit. Now this center is going to set up just fine. It takes time. Cheesecakes don't get done in a couple hours. They have to, they have to set overnight. So this one's gonna to cool to room temperature and then you're gonna put it in the refrigerator overnight and then it'll be ready for decorating. Okay, we've just uh, had our cheesecake sitting overnight in the refrigerator. That's so it gets nice and chilled and set up. You want a nice firm cheesecake to decorate. So now we're gonna take it out of the pan and that's uh, obviously you just release the catch. Run your knife around the edge so you get a nice clean edge. Lift gently and there you have your cheesecake, nice and round, nice easy. Brush all any crumbs off so you got a better presentation. And I like to grip the side of a parchment and slide it over. Lift your hand under and slide it over to the board or the plate that you're putting it on. Smooth it down a little bit, remove any extra crumbs. And now you're ready for the next step, decorating your cake. Okay, we've taken it out of the pan and have it set up on our board all set to decorate. Now there is a little trick. See the little extra parchment around here? Now you can tear that off. You can cut it off. Or what I like to do is take your sharp knife and just tuck it under. You don't see it. You don't have to wrestle with it. And it just disappears. And the way you've cut those little pieces, it all goes underneath. Okay. Oh, a couple over here. 
As I said, they just, they just slide underneath and out of sight. Okay. Take some extra crumbs. All right. Now, to start, I like to use a heavy whipping cream on a cheesecake because the buttercream just doesn't work. And sometimes you want to decorate, you want to hide the, pre the edges that are not maybe exactly perfect or even the center or whatever. Things happen, tastes great, but Maybe it's not gorgeous, so you can hide that easily with a topping, or you can serve it without one. I like to use whipping cream, so I use about a little over, like a cup and a half or so. This is, again, this is by taste. If, you, if you're not a whipping cream fan, don't add it. It makes it a little pretty. I use uh, powdered sugar. Again, helps to stabilize a little bit. Use about a third of a cup, a little less, a little more, depending on the sweetness. Now, I like to use agar agar. And agar agar is a thickening agent. You can buy it online. Uh, you can buy it through Amazon or wherever. But it doesn't take very much, and it stabilizes anything from jellies to um, making balsamic pearls. And I'm going to address that in another episode. But it'll, it thickens things up with and stabilizes them without adding a lot of volume. And you just sort of sprinkle that on top of your powdered sugar. Okay. And then... And I used about, about about a teaspoon or so. It doesn't take very much. But another thing that you can use, easier to get if you don't have agar agar, and instant pudding. About a tablespoon of instant pudding, plain vanilla instant pudding, um, works for stabilizing whipped cream or any kind of frosting, anything like that. So you can use that too. All right. Now we're going to whip the cook up. Now you want to really stiff whip on this because you want it to set up on your cake and make very pretty peaks and it makes a nice stiff line on your with your decorating tip if it's if it's firm. Now at this point, you can see around the edges, I'm going to take a spatula. Run around the edges, and then finish finish whipping. This way, anything, any bits of powdered sugar, cream that didn't get nicely whipped. There we go. And then just set that aside. And finish up. It's starting to set up real nice. Now this is the point you want to watch because you do not want to get it over whipped. If you over whip it, it will start to separate and it will not be a, a pretty topping. See that now? Yeah, it's nice and starting to get thick and starting to form those teeth. Okay. Now what? Stop this. Now watch. See? See the peaks form? That's all done. Do a little low speed usually just to be whip up the beaters. 
Set this aside. Can tap a little extra off of there. Okay, now I always use a piping, piping bag. Now you can add vanilla if you want. This is a key lime. I chose not to add vanilla to it because I'm going to add a little bit of uh, lime decorations on the top and lime and vanilla fight each other. In a traditional cheesecake, you will add vanilla. Again, you can add almond flavoring, vanilla flavoring, any type that you want. It's your recipe. It's your recipe. You do what you want with it. Okay, this is my husband's Nutrisystem smoothie bag jar. It's the biggest one I could find in the house. You put a, a piping bag. I have a star tip on it. One of the things I do recommend is you keep piping bags in the house. You can make mini cupcakes with these things or big cupcakes. You don't get all of the batter on the side. You just push it right into the cupcake little paper and it goes right in the oven. So I use them for everything. And then with those, you don't even have to put a tip on them. For decorating, you tip. You just slide this in here, make a sleeve, because remember, you're going to close it up, so you need a sleeve. Put it down. Make sure you got a nice surface. Okay, then you're going to run your spatula around the top of your bowl again. You want to get all of the, all the goodness. Okay, and now you're going to fill this bag. taps make sure you get the air out that way you can get more of it in and sometimes you're gonna have leftover don't worry as your bag uh, depletes if you need some more you can add it you can untwist the bag and add some more okay we're gonna set that aside this is about uh, okay yeah I did it's all sticking, sticking out. I'm gonna twist the air out of it. Now that you're hold it in one hand because you're going to guide, you're gonna put your pressure on with your hand, and then you're gonna guide it with your other hand. So we're gonna get rid of this so you can see what's going on here. Okay. There's our cake again. Okay, you can use a carousel if you have one, put it on a carousel and then twist it around. Otherwise, just move your cake or your arms, whatever you, whichever way you want. And it doesn't have to be fancy, just like I said, I just do like a little squirts. This is very forgiving. And as you twist it around, it'll give you a follow the rim of your cake. Another thing I like about cake decorating like this, you don't have to be a professional. I'm certainly not. <laughs> when I move it for my family, just it does, it hides a lot of flaws and a lot of cakes. And when you use a bag, if you have a depression or, or um, something you're trying to cover up, it goes right over it. Your guests don't see it. Your family doesn't see it. You're a star. Okay, now you do the same thing. You keep making circles inside. A lot of times you do a traditional, if you're doing like a regular New York cheesecake, you would make like two rims and then you would put your strawberries or something in the center or whatever fruit that you like. And you just, as I said, keep twisting. And the tip does all the work. You don't have to worry about it. And one more. We're just going to do the whole top of the cake. This cake came out just a little browner than I like, so I'm going to cover it up.
You keep twisting, moving your whipped cream down, and you use this, this hand to guide and this hand to squeeze. There you go. Okay, now if you look, now we can look again, look at the top of your cake. You see a little, a little more there, a little more here. Okay, it just fills in the little gaps. You've got extra. Okay. Now this will keep in the refrigerator for a couple of days. So if you need a whipped cream on top of ice cream or anything else, it's fine with that. Okay, now I like grab my grater. I have a microplane. I like to take a lime and I like persist over the top. This is again why I didn't use the vanilla. I've already washed this lime so it's nice, so the skin is nice and clean, so it'll go right on your cake. Make sure there's no moisture on it though, because then you're gonna get clumps. There, see how it makes it, the definition between the two makes it for a very pretty cake. And we're gonna sort to accent. Okay, and we're still uh, putting a little zest around the corner. Try to get it spaced so it's kind of even. Remember, lemon zest and lime zest, orange zest. Orange with chocolate is delicious, by the way. Okay, so it just looks even. And then tap your zester. Okay. All right. Now what we're going to do is the same lime, slice it. All right. Now what we're going to do is the same lime, slice a slice of lemon of lime off. Try to make it a thin slice. Try to make it as even as you can. Okay. You're gonna half it, and then you're gonna. Let me turn this drawer here a little bit. Made a slice. You're going to half it. Then you're going to half it again. See this? And do a turn. And put it in the middle of your cake. Do the same thing with the other half. Twist. Make a turn. And put it that way. Has to cooperate. There. Now there is the center of your cake. Now if you notice I have these little gold draggies. They make a little, they make a plain cake look very festive looking. They're little pieces of sugar that uh, has been colored gold. You can get them in any color of the rainbow. Gold, silver, pink, purple, you name it. Multicolored, everybody's seen draggies. So I like these little tools, these little tweezers. Uh, you can get a set of three of these in different ones. This is, I only use these when I need to set them like for the center because it's hard to do this when you're trying to do it with fingers. But with tweezers, with cooking tweezers, you can get it right in the center and it makes it look a little special. Do like five of these so that it makes a center to, well, make it six. There. Now we have the center. Now we're going to Use the rest of them in your hand. Bring them all over the top of your cake a little bit. Okay. I want to kind of get them evenly dispersed just so you. Okay. This makes it a little more festive. Looks like you went to a little more work than you really did. <laughs> there you are. And this one, there we are. Finished cheesecake. It's a key lime. 
Now this will serve, just so everyone knows, this cheesecake has like two and a half pounds of cheese, cream cheese in it. So it will serve about 11. Do not, when you first slice this cheesecake, you're not going to want to give people a slice like you do regular cake. You're going to want to slice maybe this thin, maybe, maybe an inch and a half, two inches. And even that will be very, it's a very rich cheesecake, delicious, but very rich. Okay, now we're set to serve our cake. Now this, uh, it's best that you take your, your cheesecakes and you leave them in the refrigerator, get them as cold as possible. You know, sometimes you can even freeze them a little bit. Um, it doesn't hurt them at all. They taste wonderful. But when you serve it, try to keep it as cold as possible. And that way it'll be easier to serve. It'll cut cleaner. One of the, one of the tricks with cheesecake is get a long, sharp knife and have a, a container of water because you're going to dip it in. And when you dip it in, shake the water off. But it coats the knife and it allows you to go right through the cheesecake very easily without the minimum of fuss, which is, it is fuss. Go straight down, get this out of the way. Put your fingers on there, pull, dip, and now you're going to do the other side. Now use a Okay, you can see that the cake looks nice and creamy inside. It's it's a beautiful presentation piece. Looks great on the plate. You can take this at any point after you've served your guests. If you have cheesecake left over, take it and put it in the refrigerator. Or if you want to keep it longer, keep it in the freezer. It's delicious. You can slice it right from the freezer. My husband eats it almost like an ice cream. So it's, it's really good that way too. Now let's see if all of our hard work is pulled off. Slice. Oh, look at that. You see your crust, nice and creamy. Okay, final test. Hmm. That is a good cheesecake. You won't be disappointed in this, and neither will your guests. Bye now, and tune in soon. May, uh, be sure to subscribe.